Quaker Puff Wheat, and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one Hussies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Fellas and girls, hurry. Time is running out. Hurry if you want to get in on the new Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice great offer. Friday, day after tomorrow, is the last day you'll hear it. Hurry, get your order in for your official Challenge of the Yukon secret two-way signal light. This brand new pocket-sized two-way flashing signal light is an amazing invention. It's like a special kind of flashlight. It sends out beams of red light or beams of green light. Yes, it flashes red or it flashes green. There's nothing like this mystifying signal light for sending secret codes and messages, for signaling your friends, for fun. Send for yours now. Listen for details later on in today's program. Lucky Jolliffe had been away from Dawson City almost six weeks on a special trip to Skagway for his boss, old Alex Campbell, owner of the Campbell Mining Company. Now he was coming home again after a record run up from Skagway by dog sled. On the outskirts of Dawson, he stopped for a moment at the cabin of a friend. We're lucky, so you finally got back. Fastest run I ever made. Just 16 days since I left Skagway. I had one close call, though. Why, what happened? Wolves attack you? No, I went through the ice on 30 Mile River. Never would have gotten out of it hadn't been for this lucky charm of mine. <laughs> you and that little dinky bulldog charm of yours. Why, it's no bigger than my little finger. You always carry that thing pinned to your pocket? <laughs> I wouldn't be without it. Say, I wonder how my boss's daughter's been making out since I've been gone. Well, now, Lucky, maybe none of my business, but a fellow named Tom Haynes has been paying lots of attention well, to Janey ever since you left Dawson. Tom Haynes? A tin horn gambler. Well, he may be a tin horn gambler, but he sure knows how to make himself agreeable to the ladies. From what I hear, he's been seeing Janie almost every day. <coughs> hey, where are you going? You haven't finished your coffee. Sorry, old timer. I've got business to attend to. Burning with jealousy and resentment, Lucky Jolliffe hurried into town. He knew he would probably find Janie at her aunt's house in Dawson. And it was Janie herself who opened the door in answer to his knock. Lucky, it's you. Oh, I'm so glad you're back. You sure of that, Janie? Why, Lucky, of course I'm sure. Come on in. Thanks. From what I just heard, I thought maybe you... Oh, so it's true then. Well, hello there, Jolliffe. So you got back from Skagway, huh? Yes, I'm back, Haynes. Not a bit too soon from the looks of things. Just what do you mean by that remark? I mean it's true what the old timer told me. That Tom Haynes here has been trying to steal my girl while I've been gone. If you're implying that there's anything wrong about Mr. Haynes visiting me here at my aunt's, I'll thank you to apologize. Look, Janie, maybe I'm acting jealous. All right, I admit it. But for heaven's sake, don't you realize that Tom Haynes has no business courting any decent girl? I'm surprised your dad and your aunt even let you see him. Dad and Aunt Laura have a little respect for my judgment. Tom has been very nice to me and... Unlike some people I could name, he knows how to behave like a gentleman. A gentleman? <laughs> you should see him dealing pharaoh to the Chichacos at the Monte Carlo. Well, if I've taken just about enough of you, Alep. If it weren't for Miss Campbell here, I'd... You'd what? Stop it. Lucky Jolliffe, you're a guest here in my aunt's home. I suggest you either behave accordingly or go elsewhere. In other words, you want me to leave and Haynes to stay. Is that it? You're free to think anything you please. All right, then I'll leave. Before I go, here's something I brought back from Skagway. You might as well keep it, since I won't be needing it anymore. It's 
For you, Haynes, I'll see you later. Personally, I think you're well rid of that young fool. I'm not so sure, Tom. He handed me this little package. I wonder what on earth is... A diamond ring. He was going to propose to me. And now I've lost him. What about me, Janie? You know I've just been waiting for a chance to propose to you myself. Not now, Tom. Maybe later, but not now. Old Alex Campbell lived in a log house about two miles east of Dawson City. Lucky Jolliffe reported to the old man on the results of his trip to Skagway, and then announced bluntly that he was quitting his job with the Campbell Mining Company. Alex soon guessed what was wrong. He was fond of Lucky and tried to persuade him not to take the situation too seriously. Well, Lucky, so you're going to quit working for me just because you and Janie had a spat? It was more than a spat. She's thrown me over for that tin horn gambler Tom Haynes. Well, now, Lucky, if you weren't such a hot-headed young idiot, you'd have sense enough to say nothing and wait till Janie comes to her senses. You're a fine one to be giving advice. If you were any sort of a father, you wouldn't let her have anything to do with a grifter like Haynes. That's just about enough out of you. Now who's losing his temper? The truth hurts, doesn't it, Harry? Why, you... <laughs> Maybe it'd be just as well all around if you did quit your job before getting fired. Now here, I'll pay you what's coming to you. Then get out! Sergeant Preston and his dog team, with King as loose lead, had stopped in front of Alex Campbell's house. He saw Lucky Jolliffe leave the building and stride wrathfully away. Alex came to the door and watched, then turned and looked at Sergeant Preston. Looks like young Jolliffe isn't very happy about something. Yeah, doggone young puppy. He saw it because Janie's been seeing another fellow while he was down the Skagway. Oh? Huh? Oh, never mind that, though, Sergeant. Come on in. You too, King. I'm King. Uh, have a chair, Sergeant. Thanks. Well, Sergeant... What brings you this way? Alex, the bank officials in Dawson tell me you do out your payroll money this morning. Yes, I did. Got it right here in my strong box. Payday is not until tomorrow, is it? Well, that's right. But I thought I'd draw the money out today while I was in Dawson. I wouldn't have to make a special trip tomorrow. You think it's safe to keep that much money on the premises overnight? You're all alone here at night, aside from Janie. Oh, sure, Sergeant. I'm not worried. Well, hello there, Sergeant Preston. We saw your dog team outside. How are you, Janie? <laughs> Oh, I see you have an escort. Yes. You know Tom Haynes, don't you, Sergeant? We've met. Quiet, King. Your dog doesn't seem to like me, Sergeant. King has decided opinions about people. Well, don't you go growling at Tom. He's a friend of mine. He brought me out from town on his partner's sled. We don't see you out this way very often, Sergeant. Is this an official visit? Sergeant Preston came to warn me about drawing out the payroll money ahead of time. He doesn't think I should keep it here in my strong box overnight. Well, it might be rather dangerous at that in a lonely spot like this. Well, I'm not worried. <laughs> Dad's as stubborn as I am, Sergeant. I didn't know you were stubborn, Janie. Well, I've said what I had to say, so I'll be moving along. Well, won't you stay while I make some tea, Sergeant? Thanks, Janie. I think I'd better be going. Come on, King. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Sergeant. Goodbye, Sergeant. By the way, Dad, we passed Lucky Jolliffe on our way out here. I suppose you know I had a quarrel with him. Yes, I know all about it. I had a quarrel with him myself. You quarreled with him? What about? Never mind, it doesn't matter. Point is, he quit his job. Lucky quit his job? That's right. I paid him off just before Sergeant Preston got here. Oh, I'm sorry if I've been the cause of all this unpleasantness. It's not your fault if Lucky wants to act so childish. Well, let's forget Lucky and talk about something else. How's your Aunt Lord, Jeannie? She's not feeling very well, Dad. As a matter of fact, she wants me to come back to town and stay with her overnight. Do you suppose you can spare me? <laughs> well, I guess I can struggle along till you get back. Seeing as how I did my own housekeeping for ten years before I ever met your mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're sure you can manage, then I'll stay with Aunt Laura. Tom has promised to bring me back tomorrow morning. A short time later, Janie Campbell and Tom Haynes started back to town. It was late in the afternoon when the gambler dropped Janie at her aunt's house and headed for the hotel where he shared a room with his pal, Joe Meeker. He had just finished unharnessing the dog team, but a menacing figure stepped forward to confront him. Hello there, Haynes. A lucky jolly. That's right. A while back, you started to tell me what you'd do if Janie Campbell weren't around. 
Just thought I'd give you a chance to finish that remark. If you've got the nerve. <laughs> now, you know, Jolliffe, that was mighty thoughtful of you. I'll show you how much nerve I've got. Take this. Take... You missed, Haynes. Try this. Are you... In a moment, the two men were surging back and forth in a deadly struggle for supremacy. True to the primitive code of the North, no quarter was asked or given. Tom Haynes was the taller and heavier of the two, but Lucky was handy with his fists. Before long, he had sent the gambler staggering back under a punishing barrage of blows. I guess that'll do for now, Haynes. When you want more, come around and let me know. As Lucky Jolliffe strode away, the gambler's eyes followed him with a look of burning hatred. Jolliffe... I'm going to get you if it's the last thing I ever do. Suddenly, a small object shining against the snow caught the gambler's attention. Hey, wait a minute. That's the little bulldog lucky charm Jolliffe carries around with him all the time, pinned to his parker. It must have come off during the fight. Now, that gives me an idea. Jolliffe, I've got a hunch you're going to be mighty sorry you lost this. Tom Haynes went to his hotel room where he found his partner, Joe Meeker, waiting for him. Meeker, a heavy-set bearded man, eyed the gambler moodily. Uh, where have you been, Haynes? Looks like you're just tangled with trouble. I had a scrap with Lucky Jolliffe. <laughs> and he dusted you off, huh? <laughs> oh, isn't that just too bad? Don't worry, I'll fix that skunk. You're full of big talk, Haynes. Like the way you was going to sweep Janie Campbell off her feet with your fancy court and... And marry her so you could get control of her old man's mining property. Yeah, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Oh, I've heard that before. Now, listen. I've got a plan that'll get Jolliffe and the old man out of the way at the same time. Janie will inherit the mine, and I'll have no rivals to worry about when I ask her to marry me. Yeah. It'll have to be a mighty slick plan to do all that. It's slick, all right. Just listen to this. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Fellas and girls, suppose it's like this. Suppose your gang has an important secret meeting on in your clubhouse or hideout. It's dark, and you're posted outside as lookout. You're on patrol, yet hidden from sight. Suddenly, you spot a rival bunch. Stranger sneaking up. Say, there's where your new official Challenge of the Yukon secret two-way signal light comes in handy. Mighty handy. Man, oh man, by flicking your finger, you can signal a message through to your friends with your mystifying signal light. In a flash, they're alerted. You're in direct communication with them, without being seen or any stranger being the wiser. Say, could you and your friends use a wonder-working, genuine two-way signal light like that? Hmm, could you? Well, get a move on. If you hurry, you can send for your own special two-way flashing signal light. It's like a special kind of flashlight. It's new, it's different, it's two-way. That is, it sends out beams of red light or beams of green light. This amazing signaling device flashes red and it flashes green. It works much like blinker signal guns used by the Army and Navy. This secret signal light has a special plastic directional signal barrel. That's to prevent strangers from detecting your secret signal flashes. Your signals can be seen only by the person at whom they're aimed. Imagine using it for sending messages. You can work out special codes with your friends. For instance... One green flash followed by three red flashes might mean be on the alert. Strangers are approaching. Or four green flashes might mean the coast is clear. You can carry your two-way signal light anywhere without anyone being the wiser. It's pocket size. It fits snugly in your pocket. And your new official Challenge of the Yukon signal light is keen looking, too. All shiny black. And across the side is Sergeant Preston's name in his own handwriting. What's more, it comes complete with standard replaceable electric bulb and battery. To get yours, just send 25 cents in coin. That's 25 cents plus one box top from a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. This mystifying flashing signal light is not on sale in stores anywhere. Send one box top from Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice together with 25 cents and your name and address plainly printed on a piece of paper. Mail to Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. But hurry, day after tomorrow is the last and final day. Write down that address. No, it's Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. (laughs) 
Now to continue our story. The morning after his fight with Lucky Jolliffe, Tom Haynes escorted Janie Campbell from her aunt's home to her father's house, two miles east of Dawson City. The log house stood silently in the lonely clearing as Haynes pulled the dog team to a halt. Oh, he's in. Oh, he's in. Funny, oh. Dad's not out to greet us. Well, maybe he's sleeping late this morning. Dad never sleeps late. Let's go on in. Oh, Dad, we've come back from. Dad! Janie, what's. Oh, heavens. Something's happened to Dad. He's lying there on the floor. Janie, go back. Let me handle no, this. No, no, I won't go back. Dad! Dad! Oh, is he. Yes. Yes, he's <gasps> dead. Oh, no. He's stabbed in the chest. <gasps> Say, wait a minute. Didn't he keep that strong box here with the payroll money in it? What? What? I guess so. Well, it's not here now. It must have been a robber who killed him. Looks like he put up a terrific struggle before he was stabbed. In fact, he, he's got something clenched in his fist. Let's see what it is. A little metal bulldog. A what? What? Well, that belongs to Lucky Jones. Yes, you're right about that. That little lucky piece he always wears pinned to his parker. But that means Lucky was the one who... Who killed your father. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid it does. Your father must have pulled it off Lucky's parker during the struggle. This is a case for the Mounties. Leaving the old man's body just as they had found it, Janie and Tom Haynes drove hastily back to town to notify Sergeant Preston of the murder. Less than an hour later, the sergeant was examining the scene of the crime. With him were Tom Haynes and Constable Murray of the Mounted Police. Janie had been left at her aunt's house in Dawson. You say the body was just like this when you found it, except for the lucky piece held in the hands. That's right, Sergeant. Mm -hmm. And the strong box containing the money was gone. Well, did Lucky Jolliffe know the payroll money was here in the premises? Why, sure, Constable. He probably found that out yesterday afternoon when Alex paid him off. Well, that case looks pretty bad for young Jolliffe, eh, Sergeant? On the surface, anyway. On the surface? Why, it's as plain as day that Jolliffe's guilty. You seem to have it all figured out, Haynes. Well, pay a call on Lucky and see what he has to say for himself. You stay here and guard the body, Constable. Haynes, right, Sergeant. you come with me. When Sergeant Preston and Tom Haynes arrived at Lucky Jolliffe's cabin, they were surprised to find the place deserted. Now, this is proof he's guilty. He must have noticed his Lucky charm was missing and realized he'd left it at the scene of the murder. So he decided to hightail it before the Mounties came after him. If so he won't get far, King will trail him. I'll bring him in the cabin so we can get the scent. What's the matter, boy? The great dog King had found something near the cabin, and he was sure his master might be interested. With the Mountie and Tom Haynes following, he led the way to a spot where the ground and a stack of firewood was sheltered from the snow by a long, low, sloping roof. Here, the brown earth, free of snow, was exposed and showed signs of having recently been dug up. King had caught a scent at that spot, and he clawed at the loose earth with his paws. What is it, King? What'd you find? It's probably nothing, Sergeant. Come on, you'd better not lose any time in picking up Jollop's trail. I think we'd better take a look at this first. King's busy paws quickly cleared away the fresh-turned earth. Sergeant Preston helped, and presently found a box. A black metal box. Unless I'm wrong, this belongs to Alex Campbell. All right, fellow, I can get it up now. Whoever put it here left the key in the lock. Let's see if the money's inside. Yes, cash is here, still done up in the bank's wrappers. So it turns out you were right, Haynes. We did find the money hidden around Jolliffe's cabin. I guess this clinches his guilt, eh, Sergeant? You don't really believe a murderer would steal this much money and then run off and leave it behind him, do you, Haynes? Especially with very obvious signs of digging to call attention to the spot where he'd buried the loot? Just what do you mean by that? Nothing at all. I'm merely pointing out the facts. In the meantime, King and I are going after Lucky Jolliffe. Come on, King. Considerably worried by Sergeant Preston's attitude, Haynes hurried to tell his partner, Joe Meeker, of Lucky's disappearance. Meeker was greatly upset by the news. Haynes, you and your confounded plans. No one will ever believe Jolliffe committed murder and then ran off and left the money behind him. How was I to know he'd pick this particular morning to blow town? Well, you should have thought of it. Once that mountie gets suspicious that Jolliffe was framed, the trail will lead right back to you. To me? Why, sure. Everyone knows you've been after Jolliffe's girl. Who else would have any reason for framing oh, him? Oh, shut up. Be quiet for a minute. I'd figure out some way to get us out of this mess. Well, hurry up with your figuring. Then. Wait a minute. I think I've got it. And I better be good. Let's hear it. Listen. Jolliffe must be heading for Ogilvy. 
that's the direction Preston is trailing him. Now, we'll start out along the same trail and ambush Preston when he brings Jolliffe back to town. We'll kill them both and hide Jolliffe's body. That way, they'll think Jolliffe killed the Marty and then took to the wilderness to hide out. By golly, Haynes, I think you got it. That'll settle the whole business once and for all. Lucky Jolliffe had a start of several hours on Sergeant Preston, but with King setting the pace, the sergeant steadily cut down the distance between them. It was almost evening when Preston finally overtook his quarry. Okay, Sergeant Preston. I sure didn't expect to see you on the trail. Matter of fact, I've been chasing you, Lucky. Chasing me? Yes, a murder was committed in Dawson, and this was found in the dead man's hand. My bulldog Lucky piece. You know it was missing? Yes. And now I'll bet I know how I lost it, too. Oh? How did you lose it, Lucky? Last night I had a fight with Tom Haynes. The lucky piece must have come off during the fight. That dirty rat must have found it and planted it on the murdered man. Haynes, eh? That's interesting. Who was murdered? Alex Campbell. Alex Campbell? Sergeant, you don't think I'd kill an old friend like Alex? You did have an argument with him. Yes, and Haynes probably found that out when he took Janie home. That's why he's framing me this way. If you're innocent, Lucky... Why are you running away from Dawson? Not running away. I just... Well, it just happens that Janie threw me over for Haynes. Oh. This morning I decided to leave Dawson and go back to the States to make a fresh start. That's the gospel truth. Lucky, I'm inclined to believe you're innocent, but there's a lot of evidence against you, so you'll have to come back to Dawson with me until this case is cleared up. I think I threw a bit of a scare into Haynes before I left town. If he's really trying to frame you... I have a hunch he'll show his hand very soon. Sergeant Preston and Lucky Jolliffe camped that night on the banks of the Yukon River. The following morning, they started back for Dawson. Meanwhile, Tom Haynes and Joe Meeker had taken up positions near a bend in the trail and were lying in wait for the two men on their way back to town. It was less than half an hour later that Joe Meeker scrambled down from the crest where he was lookout with the news that he had spotted Sergeant Preston and his companion coming along the trail. They're coming all right, Haynes. I think the Mounties in the lead. Good. Then we'll plug him first. Get your gun ready. Right. As Sergeant Preston neared the bend on the trail, some ancient instinct of the wild stirred in the brain of King, the great lead dog. Somehow he sensed the danger lay ahead for his beloved master. His delicate nostrils lifted to the wind. And then suddenly he caught it. The scent of man. Abruptly, he slowed the team, and Sergeant Preston called a halt. Okay. What's the matter, Sergeant? I don't know. King seems to think something's wrong. What is it, boy? You trying to warn me? What's up, Sergeant? Evidently, he's caught a scent from up trail. It might mean that someone's lying an ambush for us around that bend there. We'll watch and see what he does. As the minutes passed, Haynes and Meeker began to wonder why their victims had not come in sight around the shoulder of the trail. Joe Meeker spoke. Yeah, it's funny why those two haven't come in sight yet. Shouldn't have taken more than ten minutes for them to around that bend after we heard their dogs. Yeah, it's funny why the barking stopped. Do you suppose they got suspicious? It sure looks that way. Haynes, I'm going back up on the crest of the hill and see what they're doing. Meanwhile, on the strength of King's warning... Sergeant Preston and Lucky Jolliffe had left the trail on, and begun skirting their way up through the scattered pines and underbrush that covered the slope of the hill. Suddenly, the wintry stillness was shattered by a shot. Get down, Jolliffe. Someone's up there on the crest of the hill. Yes. And unless we dislodge him, he can keep us pinned here all day. I'm going to work my way up to the crest. But, Sergeant, if you do that, he'll plug you for sure. I'll have to take that chance. In order to fare, he has to expose himself. I'll give you a chance to get a beat on him. I'll do my best, Sergeant. Hey, I spotted him that time. Yes, up there behind that big boulder. Get your gun ready, Lucky. All set? All set, Sergeant. Very well. Here goes. As the Mountie broke suddenly from cover, Joe Meeker saw the movement and fired. Sergeant, are you all right? Yes, and I think you've got him. I sure did. He toppled over backwards. Let's hope it's not a trick. It was no trick that had dropped Joe Meeker. Lucky's rifle bullet had shattered his right shoulder and left him stunned from shock. Even so, he might have gotten away had not King, driving forward ahead of his master, pinned the outlaw down. Help! Help! Get this dog off me! A moment later, Sergeant Preston and Lucky Jolliffe arrived on the scene. Joe Meeker, eh? I've seen you before, Meeker. You're Tom Haynes' partner. Uh, Sergeant, get your dog away before he kills me. All right, King. I'll take over now, boy. 
Sergeant Preston, I... I want to talk. Go ahead. Haynes killed Alex Campbell. I wasn't with him when it happened. Haynes promised to cut me in on a pile of money when he married Janie Campbell. He got control of her father's mining company. Unknown to Sergeant Preston, Tom Haynes was at that moment creeping closer to the spot where his wounded partner was being questioned. Since the wind was blowing in the wrong direction, King's sharp nostrils failed to pick up his scent. When Haynes finally arrived at a good position, he took careful aim at Lucky Chollop and fired. Oh, don't go for your gun, Preston. I've got you covered. Stand right where you are. So now you've got two murders against you, Haynes. Yeah, soon I'll have three. I'd have shot you first, Preston, but Jolliffe had a gun in his hand and you didn't. Your partner's been telling me about the way you killed Alex Campbell, framed Jolliffe. Yeah, and I suppose he's been claiming he had nothing to do with it. Not that it matters, because I'm going to let you have it right now. As Tom Haynes raised his gun to fire, a savage gray mass of fury suddenly launched itself into the air. All right, Haynes, I'll take your gun. Go off, Preston, go off! All right, King, let him up now, boy. It's all over. Tom Haynes and Joe Meeker... I arrest you both in the name of the Queen for the murder of Alex Campbell. The afternoon of the following day, Lucky Jolliffe sat propped up in bed in Dawson's makeshift hospital. Beside him sat Sergeant Preston and Janie Campbell. Lucky, it's a good thing Haynes' bullet didn't do more damage. I thought you were a goner at first. Uh, Doc says I'll be up and around in a couple of weeks. I'm a pretty tough one to kill. Thank goodness for that. I take it you two have patched everything up. Oh, we sure have, Sergeant. <laughs> and Janie here is going to become Mrs. Jolliffe as soon as I'm well again. Oh? You see, she's forgiven me for being such a jealous, hot-tempered fool. And Lucky's forgiven me for having anything to do with that murderer, Tom Haynes. Oh, Sergeant, thanks for all you've done. Don't thank me, Janie. It's King here who captures the criminals. <laughs> Yes, thanks to you, King Boy. Another case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Going, going, gone. Yes, fellas and girls, send for your new mystifying secret two-way signal light before it's too late. This is the final week of our offer. Remember, to get your amazing two-way signal light, put 25 cents in coin in an envelope. Also enclose one box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice. And include your name and address. Mail immediately to Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. The address is Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Friday... When Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the meal that convicted. When King and I were following Jim Reardon's trail, we hoped to turn up something that would prove Jim innocent of the charge that he'd robbed the bank. Instead, we found him surrounded by evidence of a far greater crime. We certainly ran into excitement when the trail of a thief became the trail of killers. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.